YouTube, welcome back. Today on Kung Fu Science, I'm going to be talking to you about Bruce Lee's fighting stance. The strong, dominant hand forward. Is it good or is it bad? Alright, well, I'm just going to jump straight into it. Um, I'm just going to share my opinion on it. And, you know, the point of martial arts in general is to explore yourself and to develop your own understandings. Um, that's kind of what Bruce Lee did. Um, he used the fencing stance. Um, and this is long range we're talking about. So, you know, most of his stance was out. It was long. He had his leg spread. Weight transferring back and forward. Right? Bam! And he put his strong stuff frontward. The reason he put his strong hand forward is because he felt that um, having your power hand in the front to jab, to strike, would really um, throw throw your opponent off with the front hand. This, the arm that's coming forward the most being really super powerful and super quick um, would really mess with people mentally. And also, if you can knock somebody out with your first strike, boom! You know, that's it. That's all you need. Um, and I understand that. Same with the kicks. Same with the, the hand. Um, either way, you've got your intelligent, your more intelligent hand, your more competent limb in the front, right? So it's faster, it's more accurate, um, leaving your backhand, your back leg, further away, giving it the opportunity to wind up for more power like they do in boxing with the other way around. You got your power hand, your weak hand in the front, power hand in the back. Um, now what do I think about this? Um, for me, having the power hand in the back makes more sense. Um, personally, I feel that having your weak hand forward forces you to use it more. Um, you know, your jab and your lead hand is how you set up everything for your backhand, right? Um, I feel that if you put your power side forward, you're more likely to depend on it, right? But if you have your, your weak side forward, I'm a southpaw by the way, that's why my right hand keeps being my lead hand when I'm talking about weak side. Um, I find that whenever I have my weak hand forward, it makes me rely more on it and therefore using it more, right? Therefore being more confident and more intelligent with my weaker side. Um, if you draw all the time, brush your teeth all the time, brush your hair all the time with your strong hand, your weak hand does nothing but get worse, right? So the reason that I believe in putting your weak side forward primarily is that it forces you to use it more, right? And you know, this is from personal experiences, from personal training. I've trained with both sides forward. And like I said, I find that I tend to rely more on my power hand when it's in the front. And whenever I have my other hand forward, my other leg forward, I feel like I have more tools. I feel like I'm forced to use more tools. So when it really comes down to it, I feel like that's pretty intelligent. Now that being said, that doesn't mean you can't train it the other way. You can totally train it the other way. Um, you just don't want to depend too much on your power hand because then you're really slacking off. You're really uh, you know, letting go of a lot of things you could be using by having competence in both sides. Um, but that being said, like I said before, martial arts is about the personal expression and every individual you know, is going to have their own thoughts and their own mentality and their own reasons for doing things. And one of the things I always say is that you can do anything you want as long as you know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Right? So if you have your power hand forward, you need to know why you're doing it, what you're doing it for. Right? So, in my opinion, I, I would recommend being able to use either uh, at any time. Be able to switch in the middle of combos. You see a lot of guys, they got their power hand in the back, they'll be doing some shots, right? And then they switch through, right? You got your power hand in the back. Through. Same with the kick, right? You can set it up with a kick. Right? In this video, I'm not trying to show any skills or anything. I mean, you can watch my other videos for that. I'm just moving my body, you know, I'm just showing you what I mean. Um, one of the things about Wing Chun is that it forces you to be ambidextrous, it kind of forces you to use both hands when you attack. Right, but the thing about standing completely square is this only really works 
intelligently in a couple of ranges. It doesn't work in all five ranges. Um, it's like a kick range. I mean, if I stand this way in kick range, my kicks are a lot shorter than if I stand this way in kick range. Right? Quite a bit shorter, I think. So yeah, that's just my quick opinion on, you know, lead dominant hands um, and stances, structure. Um, like I said before, like I said a minute ago, I think you should be able to switch mid combo between the two. I think uh, it might be a good idea to start with uh, weak hand forward because that requires you to work it out more, it requires you to get better with your weak hand. But you do what you want to do, you know, you do it however you want. Um, if you'd like to see more videos, let me know in the comment section below. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like button. It's good karma. Until next time, thank you for watching Kung Fu Science. What's in your Kung Fu?